And there's no, uh, there's no voting on the next two items, but uh, I'm gonna ask Mr. Stephopoulos to take the lead on the discussion for agenda item 116, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, as the mayor indicated, this is, this is not a, a voting item. This is an item that we're trying to develop a consensus on to see where uh, each of the council members falls with regard to the two particular issues. Uh, given that we're still under a declared state of emergency, we're trying to make the best informed decisions that we can. The, the question before us is whether or not to hold the 4th of July uh, fireworks display. And you should all have a memo uh, that came with the package, which talks about some of the issues at hand that we're considering at the, uh, at the administration level and with conjunction of the mayor. Um, the, the first things that I'd like to point out is that um, the, the staff does have some concerns about going forward with the 4th of July display. Uh, the first is with regards to crowd size and police control. Uh, we'll talk about in just a minute the fact that there are many other uh, organizations around us, communities that are canceling their 4th of, 4th of uh, July fireworks displays. So obviously there is a concern from our police department as well as from administration that the number of people who may come to the beach specifically to watch fireworks would be higher than what we've seen in previous years, which would make both the, um, the control and the management of a crowd of that size a little bit more difficult to actually uh, handle. Uh, the second is with regards to uh, social distancing. Um, as many of you are aware, there are, are still guidelines in place issued by the, the CDC as well as the governor with regards to crowd size and social distancing, the separation that you should try to maintain. Um, inviting tens of thousands of people into our downtown at night in the dark uh, would create a uh, virtual impossibility to manage any type of social distancing. Um, as Chief Smith and I discussed uh, several occasions leading up to this meeting, if the city were to proceed with a, with a fireworks display, there legitimately can be no expectation of enforcing social distancing. He would need every resource in his disposal just to manage the crowd size alone, let alone trying to tell groups more than 10 to break apart. The third is with regards to what's actually going on around us. And I do have some updates for you. Uh, within the memo, you see a list of uh, communities in central and Northeast Florida and where they stand with regards to uh, 4th of July fireworks. Orlando has canceled and will be holding a virtual fireworks display. Flagler County, as well as the city of Flagler Beach have both canceled. St. Augustine was waiting until today to make their decision at their council meeting. The city of Daytona Beach has canceled. Uh, Naval Station Mayport has canceled. City of Fernandina Beach will be having a fireworks display put on by a third party nonprofit, but they will have no vendors at the event. Orange Park has postponed until Labor Day. Jacksonville is not making a decision until tomorrow. Uh, I think they're probably waiting to see what happens with us in St. Augustine because of that domino effect. If the two of us both cancel, then that means even a larger crowd may show up in downtown Jacksonville and make their control more difficult as well. St. Mary's has postponed theirs until the Shrimp Festival in October. Uh, Palatka, we have since learned, has, has postponed theirs as well. And uh, we also found out that the city of, Gaines, uh, city of Gainesville has also canceled their 4th of July fireworks event. Um, our recommendation from staff is that we not proceed with the event, but perhaps consider doing it at a later point in time in the year. Perhaps look at doing a Labor Day fireworks display. We did check with the pyrotech pyrotechnic company and there is no problem with scheduling them or at least preliminarily scheduling them at this point in time for that weekend. The final check that we would need to make would be with the city of Jacksonville to make sure that the funding could still be used within this fiscal year just for a different date instead of 4th of July. Their offices had been closed up until today, so we'd not been able to get an answer with regards to the funding. And for those of you who may have heard, they actually postponed their uh, non-essential workers returning to work today because of the protests that were occurring in downtown Jacksonville. So hopefully that's something within a 24 to 48 hour window, we'd be able to get an answer on with regards to funding for Labor Day. Uh, with that, uh, Mayor, and, and with, your, uh, with your approval, the, the thought process here would be that um, each of the uh, six or se each of the seven council members would basically just uh, 
take a minute or so to explain their position with regards to the fireworks. And then uh, the mayor and I would effectively make a decision within the next 24 to 48 hours based on the feedback from council and any additional information we gather from the city of Jacksonville. Sounds good. I'm just gonna go down the list in front of me here for uh, participants. And I first on the queue would be yeah, Mr. Doherty. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> uh, I mean, there's several issues here. Um, July 4th, I believe, um, is on a Saturday this year, and that will add to the crowds. Um, if Jacksonville and uh, uh, St. Augustine cancel theirs and we go ahead with ours, I could see that being complete chaos. So I do, um, I do think we should postpone, not cancel. I would like to throw in there maybe the thought of a New Year's Eve display as opposed to Labor Day. Um, in the same calendar year concerning the funding, there's usually less people out here in the uh, winter time than there are around Labor Day. Labor Day is another very busy day for the police. So we may be moving one issue to one problem to another problem there. But the main thing uh, that I think we're all concerned with is the social distancing and regardless if we have fireworks or not Jack's Beach will be a zoo on that day um, you know I've, I've worked every July 4th for the last 20 years and I know that there are just thousands of people that come starting at 10 o'clock in the morning and usually <clears throat> the fireworks are, are kind of like the last call so to speak for people to go home so, you know, I just, uh, maybe if we could ask uh, Chief of Police, if we do have contingency plans for getting the crowd to, you know, disperse at a reasonable time, as opposed to pushing it to bar closing time, which is what I'm assuming will happen if we don't have the big display. Um, but yeah, we, we, you're right. We cannot enforce social distancing. I've, I've already seen that people are, kind of over it already. I think uh, in another month's time, there'll be less social distancing. And I do see the July 4th being a, a monster day for the beach and a, a very taxing and stressful day for the police force. So that's, that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I agree with um, Mr. Doherty's sentiments. Also, it's not mentioned in the memo, but on Saturday, July 4th, high tide is at 8.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. So making the um, opportunity for social distancing even lower. Um, I just wanted to throw out there, I'm not advocating one way or the other for this, but I did um, listen in on a webinar this morning hosted by the Florida League of Cities. And one of the main topics was how cities are dealing with their fireworks displays with the thought that, um, it's, it's nice to have a celebration during, a, you know, this hard time that we're going through, but um, how can cities safely do that? So there are some creative solutions that have been um, coming up besides just simply canceling, postponing to another um, holiday is certainly one of them. I do like the idea of New Year's because we can do them earlier because it's darker earlier. Um, so that would be I definitely an idea I would support, but also, um, the way that we're discussing it now assumes that the fireworks have to be on the beach over the ocean, which is certainly something that is unique about our fireworks and also is part of what draws the big crowds. But something that we could potentially consider for this year or even future years going forward when we do have a high tide situation is thinking differently about the location. And what I thought of based on this call, the call this morning and some of the other ideas was our golf course. Um, so having a you know fireworks display where the firecrackers are going off right over the golf course um, with limited access to that area, so you don't gather the crowds right there, it would be very visible to um, a lot of the community from their homes and versus attracting a large crowd to the area. So I just wanted to throw that out there as an idea, um, maybe not even for this year, but for uh, future food for thought as a potential option um, for our fireworks display. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Nichols.
I guess I'll go next. Um, I think we need to do absolutely everything we can to have these fireworks. I think the community really wants it. I think this whole time with COVID has really put us in a, a uh, not a good situation with our, our community and the residents. And I think they need to get out and do something. I think like uh, Councilman Doherty said, there's already gonna be a lot of people out here having the fireworks is not gonna increase it. You know, it's not gonna double or triple it. Um, I think that um, we need to have them and especially if COJ has it. I think we leave it up to the city of Jacksonville. We have the ability to cancel at the very, at the very last minute. There's no reason for us to cancel now. The city of Jacksonville pays for the fireworks. The only thing that we have to pay for is the security and stuff, which is very easy to, you know, a day or two beforehand say, hey, we're not having them. And then we're not out any, we're not out any money. City of Jacksonville, my understanding has already agreed to pay the, um, uh, pay the pyrotechnic company for the fireworks. They're already in. Um, so those are, those are paid for. If we end up delaying them a, a day or two beforehand, then, um, then hey, so be it at that time. But I think our community, we need to do everything we can in order to have these for the community. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Dumont. Um, thank you, Mayor. I agree with Ms. Hoffman and Mr. Doherty. Um, I think delaying it is a good idea. Uh, there's just a lot of unrest right now nationwide. Um, and in addition to COVID-19, um, I like the idea of moving it possibly to Labor Day or New Year's Eve. That said, New Year's Eve falls into a new fiscal year. It might be in the calendar year, but it's a new fiscal year. And then with Jacksonville, if they were to pay for 4th of July fireworks, we're going to ask them to pay for two 4th of July fireworks, one being in July, one being um, on December 31st. So that's something that we'd need to think about um, to move it to the um, New Year's Eve. Now that said, I think that's a nice idea um, as well, but that's something that we could think of down the road, making sure that Jacksonville's on board. But I think that delaying it momentarily, uh, given just everything that's going on right now would be the prudent thing for the city to do with the crowds that are gonna come. I disagree with Mr. Nichols. I think that we will get more people if we have fireworks, especially with all the ones that have already canceled. Um, and that's, there, there are going to be a lot of people out here. There'll just be that many more people if there are fireworks. So that would be a concern. Um, definitely there'd be no social distancing. I'm going to assume, and, um, the chief can, uh, comment on this, that while you know, while he noted that they, they would not be able to maintain social distancing if there is fireworks, they would be able to, to some extent, if there were no fireworks and we still got, you know, large crowds that day, but I'm not sure um, how that would work for uh, the department. But like, I, I agree with Ms. Hoffman and Mr. Doherty that I would postpone it, um, not necessarily cancel it, but postpone it to try and see if we can work it at another time. Thank, Thank you, you. Ms. Golding. Thank you, Mayor. I, I would echo what uh, Ms. Dumont, Ms. Hoffman, and Mr. Doherty have said. Um, I, I feel that it would be prudent to postpone the fireworks for now. Um, as they've mentioned, I'd be fine with Labor Day or with New Year's Eve, either of those. Um, my concern is with our police department and what they would have to deal with if we have the fireworks. And that's my biggest concern. I'm also concerned because if we have the fireworks, that's something that the city is sanctioning and it's, um, I, I'm just not comfortable with the city sanctioning something that's just encouraging a large number of people to come out to the beach and encouraging um, the, the problem with social distancing. So I, I would support postponing the fireworks. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Vogelsang. Uh, I would agree with the majority of my colleagues in that I think postponing it is the best thing to do. I would be on board with New Year's Eve um, as the best option, even if it does put uh, Jacksonville on the hook for potentially paying twice in the same fiscal year. We're not talking about a lot of money. I think that we can budget the ten or $15,000 that the fireworks cost um, if we needed to. So that's not a real concern. I also want to have something that people look forward to. So if we do postpone it, we 
have a, a date in place. I would prefer the end of the year for New Year's over Labor Day, just because I don't know where we'll be Labor Day. I feel like in the December months and for New Year's, one, our town is a lot slower than it is normally. Even in September, I think we still have a lot of nice days, but just to help our local economy to have a day where people come when we know we're slow, I think that that would help. So I I do support postponing it. I would pick late, uh, pick uh, New Year's as the date to have it and then kind of craft that message to the public so we at least have something that our citizens and, and other residents can look forward to. Okay, thank you, sir. The uh, one thing to add to uh, Mr. Stephopoulos' comments, uh, I spoke with uh, Hunter uh, Conrad at uh, St. John's County today, and they're actually, uh, the council is gathering on the 8th to vote, so we won't know if, until a week from today. Um, I, I tend to agree with the majority, and uh, my concern is, is, is not new to anything that you guys have said. You've covered most of it. Uh, the other thing that bothers me is the potential for, you know, we're at a civil unrest period in our country's history and uh, creating additional crowds, in my opinion, is, is not what we want to be doing. Uh, distancing is important, COVID is important, uh, but the welfare and, and health and safety of our visitors during the event like that would also be important. So what I'm going to propose now is- I can say uh, something else. I apologize, yeah. I still have my hand up. Before you, I, I just, uh, uh, Mr. Stavopoulos, I mean, is there any reason why we cannot wait on this decision until later in June? Is there a direct financial impact to us? I'd really like to hear what the city of Jacksonville makes, what their decision is beforehand, because if they have it and we cancel, we are going to be sending a lot of Jacksonville Beach residents to downtown Jacksonville during that time, because just like you were saying, the people from other communities are canceled. They're going to go somewhere else. We're going to send our people in our community somewhere else. And I think we need to coordinate with the city of Jacksonville and find out what they were doing before we make a decision. And it shouldn't, they shouldn't be relying on us to make the decision for them. We, Mr. Nichols, we've, uh, I've spoken with Mayor Curry as early or as lately as uh, yesterday. And uh, he's still pondering the idea because of the issues that they're facing that we're not. Um, but uh, we are working very closely with Jacksonville and taking their inputs as we move forward. And uh, one of the things I'd like to say for the benefit of all the council, because this is a little something that uh, was a head scratcher for me. You may have remembered that uh, when I first brought this to council's attention a little over three weeks ago, uh, the reason it was raised on my radar was because the agreement for the pyrotechnic company does not go to the city of Jacksonville. That agreement has been coming to the city of Jacksonville Beach for execution. So all of the fiscal requirements, even though the, the bill has ultimately been paid by the city of Jacksonville, the signatory on the agreement is with the city of Jacksonville Beach. And if we execute that agreement and then back out at a later point in time, we are on the hook financially for the deposit, which is half of the amount, somewhere uh, around, I think, $11,000 or $12,000. Um, we are trying to work with Jacksonville to change that proactively going forward. <clears throat> but right now, the, the agreement that pops up on my computer every several days is from the pyrotechnic company to me on their automated computer system, asking me to execute the document, which I have not done up to this point in time. Do we have any financial exposure if we delay this until after the city of Jacksonville has made a decision? Yes, the pyrotechnic company had told us that we had approximately a 30-day window within which we could... Uh, uh, not make a decision, so to speak. Uh, but once we got within that 30 day window, they would hold us to the terms of the agreement, which is one of the reasons that we waited until the first to see where we were with everything. Because once we get to June 4th, we are effectively within that 30 day window. And if we canceled after that point in time and had executed the agreement, we would be on the hook financially. So if you, as long as you delay, if you delay executing the agreement with them, then you were not held to it until that time. I think the pyrotechnic company will understand the situation that's going on. They want to do that. They would like to do it, I'm sure, because they make money with these shows. And I don't think they'd have any problem waiting for the city of Jacksonville to make a decision, seeing that they are 
Uh, it's all coordinated together. If we say no, city of Jacksonville is going to say no, and that's not what they want. That's not what the uh, pyrotechnic company wants. I think we have leverage to where we can delay it. Thank you, sir. And I owe you an apology. My uh, participant list has been rotating and wouldn't fit in the entire screen. So I didn't see your hand and I apologize. Uh, what I'd like to do at this point is assuming that we move forward with postponing, we've got Labor Day and uh, uh, New Year's Eve as proposed alternatives. I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand if you uh, want to go with New Year's Eve. <coughs> computer, on the computer, Sandy. Mr. Vogel saying, Ms. Dumont, Ms. Hoffman, Mr. Doherty, and Ms. Golding. Okay. That pretty much is all we need to know. City Manager, do you have anything else to address on this one? Uh, just keep in mind with, with uh, New Year's Eve, we will have to make a request of the City of Jacksonville. I think Councillor Dumont or uh, Councillor Hoffman brought up the fact that it is a new fiscal year once we get past October 1 we would basically be asking them to roll over our 25,000 from this year into next year's budget to do two fireworks displays, December 31st and July 4th. We will try to have that conversation with Jacksonville as soon as possible, um, recognizing that they may delay the arrival of their non-essential personnel back to City Hall again for tomorrow. We're not sure yet. Mr. Stavopoulos, can I get an answer to my question about, is there any more financial exposure to the city other than that deposit that we would could potentially lose, even though the city of Jacksonville is already committed to uh, to the pyrotechnic company. Is there any other financial financial exposure that we could not change at you know a week before Fourth uh, of July? And I'm not sure if that's a question for uh, uh, for Jean Paul or or for you. But my understanding is there are no other exposure. So I don't understand why we're making this decision at this time, and we're not leaving up the city of Jacksonville. Or not, uh, we're not getting we're not getting input, finding out what they want to do beforehand. Chief Smith is probably still on the line and can talk to the issue of uh, traffic control. Uh, I know that our public works department usually goes ahead with additional traffic control and barricades. There might be a small dollar amount uh, associated with rentals, but it's probably not a very large dollar value. Um, if Chief Smith is on the line, Chief Smith, have you been able to? Uh, receive any commitment yet from JSO that they would be able to provide support related no. to traffic as they have in previous years? No, I have not. As you all know, um, I have 70 people and everybody is working crowd control on the 4th. Um, what Jacksonville has always done, the Sheriff's Office has supplied upwards of 70 to 80 people for traffic just for us. Um, Understandably, um, I received uh, some we're not sure yet last week. And then after this week, I have not uh, heard back from the sheriff or the undersheriff on any commitments on traffic. Without that traffic uh, control, there's no way we can do it unless you just want to let all the traffic uh, go and let everybody fend for themselves um, unless I get that commitment. And so to summarize, I have not received any commitment from the sheriff and I cannot imagine with everything going on in the next week or two that he's gonna have any idea whether he can commit 70 to 80 people to me for traffic. So again, I guess I, my question is, why are, we, why are we pressing this decision at this point in time? Why don't we wait a couple more weeks, see what happens and let's do that. Also, I wanna correct, um, Council Member Dumont said that I that I said that there wouldn't be any increased crowds. What I actually said is I don't believe the crowds would be doubled in size. Who did you ask the question of, Mr. Uh, Nichols? Uh, Mr. Stapopoulos. Why um, is there any, can you think of a reason that we should not delay, delay this vote? I mean, delay giving a direction until this time? I mean, 
we're going to get a lot of backlash from the residents of Jacksonville Beach and the area if we make this decision for all of Duval County, because that's an accession. That's that's what we're actually doing. And we're going to get a heck of a lot of backlash from the whole community uh, because of this decision if we make this right now. And I think we need to wait and see what the city of Jacksonville uh, determines that they're going to do. And then we can make an educated decision based on having all the knowledge at hand. Well, again, based on our conversations with the pyrotechnic company, their expectation is that we execute the agreement for them to move forward from a scheduling perspective. If we execute that agreement and we cancel at some point between now and July 4th, uh, it's our name on the agreement. We would be on the hook for that deposit money, which is the 50% of the total charge. 11, um, that's, that's really that's really the council's decision as to whether or not we want to. Ninety percent of the Jacksonville Beach residents would be in favor of. It's eleven thousand dollars. And Mike, let's go ahead and bring this to a close. I mean, we've got a vote, and it's a pretty overwhelming vote, Mr. Nichols. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this item on the agenda. We're going to move forward to the next item on the agenda.